Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose xn and yn are sequences of real numbers. If xn converges to x and yn converges to y, then xn plus yn converges to x plus y. Now, before we get into the proof, I would first like to clarify what this, this, and this mean. Now, by definition of the limit of a sequence, to say that xn converges to x means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. Similarly, to say that yn converges to y means exactly the same thing as this, it's just instead we have absolute value of yn minus y is less than epsilon. And finally, to say that xn plus yn converges to x plus y means the same thing as these, it's just instead we have absolute value of xn plus yn minus x plus y is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's get into the proof. So, we're given sequences xn and yn, and we're given that xn converges to x and yn converges to y. From here, we want to prove that xn plus yn converges to x plus y. So our whole goal is to prove this. So essentially, what we want to do is prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Now, to start, since epsilon is greater than zero, it follows that epsilon over 2 is greater than 0. Now, let's use the fact that we know xn converges to x and yn converges to y. This means we know that these two statements are true. Starting with the first statement, we know that this statement works for every positive real number. So it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So if we take epsilon here to be the epsilon over 2 we have in our proof, then we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer I'll call p, which satisfies for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2. Now let's use the fact that this second statement is true. Right? We know that this statement works for every positive real number, so it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So if we take epsilon here to be the epsilon over 2 we have in our proof, then we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer I'll call q, which satisfies for all positive integers n greater than or equal to q, the absolute value of yn minus y is less than epsilon over 2. Now remember, our goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, we're going to take k to be the bigger of p and q. And with this choice of k, we're going to show that this statement is satisfied. So we're going to show for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn plus yn minus x plus y is less than epsilon. So, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And our goal is to show that this is true. Now to start, since k is the bigger of p and q, we know that k is greater than or equal to p, and k is greater than or equal to q. To start, since k is greater than or equal to p, we have that n is greater than or equal to k is greater than or equal to p. So n is greater than or equal to p. But remember, this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to p. So it must work for n. So taking n here to be this n, we have that this is true. Also, since k is greater than or equal to q, 
we had that n is greater than or equal to k is greater than or equal to q. So n is greater than or equal to q. Right, but remember, this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to q. So it must work for n. So taking n here to be this n, we have that this is true. Okay, now let me write out the left-hand side of this inequality. If we drop the parentheses and distribute the minus sign across, we see that we can regroup this as xn minus x plus yn minus y. And then from the triangle inequality, we know that the absolute value of this is less than or equal to the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this. However, we know that the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2, and the absolute value of yn minus y is less than epsilon over 2. Therefore, this sum must be less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2. And this is just equal to epsilon. So we have shown that this guy is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So now let's put this together. We see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that this guy is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, this is less than epsilon. So we have found a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Namely, it was this positive integer. So we have shown that this is true. And we showed that this was true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And since epsilon was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we have proven this entire statement, which means we have proven xn plus yn converges to x plus y. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.